Uh, so we're in the process of disassembling the engine for a Fural swap. Um, I already took off the unnecessary parts or the parts that um, don't really aren't really used in the Fiero. Here we have the coil pack um, bracket. Now this is actually going to have a tensioner pulley on it and I think three or four bolts. I have the studs here still. Um, there's two 13s, no, one 13 and two 15s, and I wouldn't worry about taking the studs out of the block right now. Um, what you're going to do is basically cut this part of the coil pack bracket off and reinstall it. Uh, next, we have the alternator. Um, that comes on its own bracket and, uh, right here. Um, this bracket also has a tensioner pulley on it. Um, the alternator bracket sits right about there. A few, uh, few bolts. Um, take that off. I think they're 13s or 15s again. And you might have to pry it out because there are two um, coolant elbows. One that plugs in there and then that one that plugs in there. And that's just to cool off the alternator. And you're going to take off the engine bracket which also sits um, right next to, I think it sits right on top of the uh, alternator bracket. And the power steering pump. Now this guy, um, he sits right down in here. Actually, you're going to move your alternator to that same location um, with the Fiero Raj uh, engine brackets. Additionally, you're going to take off some harness material. Um, this guy just used to hold in the harness. He sat on here like that. If you guys want to see how that stuff gets taken apart, go look up Lost Not Forgotten's video. I'll include it in this description here. After all that stuff is off, I would uh, go ahead and remove the entire wiring harness. In addition to taking the wiring harness off, you might want to label all of the connectors. Just put some tape around it, mark on a Sharpie what that connector is. If you don't know what that connector is, you can ask me or um, the internet, Google. There's a bunch of connectors all over the engine. It's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Um, right here, now if you're going to send your harness in, um, you do not need to remove the um, what is this, the crank sensor and the coil pack uh, connector from the harness. Just leave that on there. You can actually unplug it from the rest of the harness. So let's get started on taking the top end apart. Um, at first, we're going to take the fuel rail off. Um, you might have taken a few clips off that the harness was attached to first. Um, the fuel rail is held on by a few studs. Um, I think they're either they're probably 10 millimeters. Go ahead and take those off and the fuel rail should pop right out. It might take an injector with it or two. Um, I leave the injectors in for now. At this state, I would take the um, engine in and maybe power wash it off if you're reusing everything on this engine, like the upper half. I'm not, um, but just you want to be careful about plugging all of your um, connector ends with tape or some kind of paper towel or something to keep it from getting wet and absorbing moisture. Plug your intake to your supercharger um, and keep your injectors in so that you don't get any water down inside the block and just use common sense in general with um, everything else. You don't want to get water into the transmission fluid or any of that either. Um, yeah, so let's get started on taking the supercharger out now. Supercharger I think has about 9, 10 millimeter bolts. I'm going to use an impact to take these off. They're all around here um, on the outside and they bolt into the um, lower intake manifold. More than 9 bolts, might have been 10 or 11, I'll show you them. But after you get those off, supercharger should come clean off. There we go. You might have some, some cords or some vacuum lines still hooked up. Um, just obviously take those off of the nipples that they're on. There we go. So your lower intake manifold has about 12 bolts on it. Um, they're all 10 millimeters. And then you're going to want to come over here. Um, look at your EGR. You want to take that off. Your EGR has a 13 millimeter bolt. So I'm going to take those guys off. That's not breaking loose. Once you get all those out, it should ah, come right out. A little bit of a yank. Try not to dump any water from power washing down into your um, engine block the best you can. But, there we have it. All right. 
So now you're going to take off the headers, a um, couple 13 millimeter bolts. I had to pull my dipstick out to get to one of the bolts because um, it was actually fastened down with a stud. Um, it's just a simple of unscrewing that stud and then pulling it out. Um, but now we're going to take off the uh, oh, cross pipe. Ah, there's the rear header. Keep all the bolts. Now this is interesting. This engine has been sitting a while and I got about uh, five or six of these acorns inside this exhaust port. And take out your other side of the cross pipe again. 13 millimeters. And it might be useful to remove the uh, 15 millimeter bolt that holds the uh, AC on. So you might have to get your uh, rear O2 sensor out, and I think a 23 millimeter is a good size for that. There it is, you're gonna wanna hang on to this. Then your EGR, you come off with a 10 right down in here. Now take the two bolts out of the side of the EGR out. They're both uh, 13. All right, and you might have to wiggle this out. Get it out of where the dipstick is or just bend the dipstick a little bit. No harm in that. 10 millimeter bolts for the valve covers. So these valve covers are the old ones and these actually were recalled. I guess they weren't replaced on here. Um, these orange seals here, you're probably going to want to replace. These were known to cause leaks. Now you've got eight um, 9 16 head bolts to take out. There's four inside underneath the valve covers, and then there's four on the outside. To get the last head stud out, you might need to uh, take this extra exhaust stud out of the block. Um, I use the five and a half millimeter. So here's the head bolts. Throw these away because these are no good anymore. Buy new ones. Uh, they're like $30 or buy ARP head studs for 80 or 90. And the head should pop right off. Uh, might leave the push rods behind. There we go. Come on. Some coolant might come out of them. There we go. Take the other head off now. There it is. And I'm going to take the uh, cups out for the push rods. I think they're for oiling. Um, Hold the lifters in just because I'm dropping this off in a machine shop and he's gonna deck my heads or deck my uh, block where the heads go. Uh, so here's the cups and now you can just pull out the lifters. And the lift, it's easy to pull out the lifters if you kind of wiggle them back and forth. And there's, there's your lifter. Now to take the engine off the transmission, there are uh, two transmission mount bolts right down here, 13 millimeters. Now get the uh, transmission off the block. There's these 18s all over here, 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 all around the block. So what I did is I'm gonna, to separate the trans from the block now, is back out these bolts that hold the trans in a little bit. And just tap them. Uh, make sure that they're threaded enough. Tap until you get a gap there. We're going to use that gap to pry it apart. So I hooked up a uh, chain to an engine hoist and I threaded the uh, head bolts all the way in around the chain area. I'm going to lift it up a little bit while I pull the block that way off the trans. So now I'm going to take a uh, little fry tool and 
in and pull it out. There we go. There we go. Up to you if you want to do this. I'm taking off all the accessories, including the uh, um, compressor here. Uh, before I dropped it off the machine shop to get the um, deck. They're all 15s. There's a few bolts that hold on brackets to it. So there's that one, uh, two bolts on the back on that bracket and then three bolts on the front. There we go. I'm gonna take off this bracket here too. I would uh, put all these parts together or in a bag. It says compressor or something. All the bolts that come off or just bolt them back into the compressor. Uh, old engine mount, we definitely don't need that. There's these two 15s here. And there's three more mounts, or bolts for that engine mount on the other side. There we go. All 15s. Now for the starter, there are two bolts on it, one under here, and one under this side. There's the starter. So now that the starter's off, we have access to the, uh, the, uh, uh, flywheel bolts. You can rotate the um, torque converter of the flywheel to get one of the three bolts to line up here and just bring it out. Um, now what I did is I put a uh, 24 millimeter socket with a wrench on the crankshaft bolt and just jammed it there against the ground so it'll hold the flywheel in place when it spins. Here comes the torque converter. So since I'm getting my heads decked, um, or my block decked, the crank needs to come out. Um, for the crank to come out, I need to take off the flywheel. If you don't get yours decked, then don't worry about this. Um, and if you don't care about your crankshaft roundness, um, I'm gonna have the machine shop measure all that stuff. So I might as well go ahead and do them a favor, take all that stuff off. Um, the flywheel is a bunch of 15 millimeter bolts. Take these out. And throw them away because they're torqued to yield. Buy some new ones. And here's the flywheel. I marked my flywheel um, with some Sharpie because this thing does look like it's balanced. Um, so I want to make sure it goes in the same exact spot relative to the crank. So I'm going to take all the front cover bolts out. I don't have a wrench right now so I can't get the balancer bolt out but we can do our best. All the front cover bolts are 13 millimeters. Um, you have to take the water pump off to get these out. So, so first I'm gonna start with the uh, water pump pulley. It is a eight, it has four eight millimeter bolts in it. You might wanna hold it. Got the pulley off, now we're gonna take all the 13 millimeter bolts out of the front cover. A couple of them go through the water pump, a couple of them don't. We'll also have to get this pulley off to get some of the bolts. It is a T50 Torx bit. There it is. There is a pretty uh, hard to reach 13 back here behind that pulley. I got a, uh, I to get my uh, shallow sockets up for this one. There's another one hidden underneath the oil filter, so I'm going to take that off so I can access it. Or you can squeeze a, uh, a different actual wrench in there instead of a socket wrench. Right there. There's a few 3 8 inch bolts. Take those off, pull the face of the water pump off. And it took a little prying, but she comes off. Mine looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna throw a new gasket on there. So I uh, cleaned off the old gasket, cut, cut it off with a razor blade, and uh, cleaned the service off, and I use metal gaskets so I can reuse them if I do need to take it back apart again. 